What up, cucks? It's your boy, the hater, up in this mug. You know what I'm saying? And as the hater keeps growing, the requests keep coming. Now, I don't have the time to do all the videos. I mean, maybe I do, but I'm not going to do more than one, sometimes two videos a day, at least for the time being, because I don't want people to get hater fatigue. You know what I'm saying? But today's video is a request, and it is a logical one. One of you, I forget who, said... Please make a video about why Gunther sucks. Now, I really like this suggestion primarily because basically I've been saying Gunther sucks. And I guess maybe I haven't exactly explained why that is, right? I mean, I thought I did. But this guy says, please make a video. I forget his name. I'm trying to find it on my phone, on my suggestions. But it is what it is. I can't find it. Um, but you know who you are, cuck. Anyways, let's get to it. I've compiled 25 reasons why Gunther sucks. Reason number one, his name change, cucks. His name change. Now, a lot of people seem to have gotten over that, right? But do you remember when everyone was like, I can't believe they're ruining Walter. He's now Gunther? That's not, that's not okay, right? You know what I mean? Like, it's as if like his name has any validity or any kind of credibility or any kind of, you know, any kind of fame attached to it. He was just a jobber. He should, they should have just done that from the beginning. I agree, right? But he went from Valta to Gunta. It's like the same fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I personally think both are, are horrible names. But Gunta makes sense for what he is. Like a Germanic type of guy, right? Uh, reason number two. All of his moves can be found on a WWF Game Boy game, right? Those games have like 20 moves on them total, right? And all of his moves are part of that game's moveset. You understand what I'm saying? He does basically a power bomb, a splash, a sleeper hold. These are like the, th the first three wrestling moves ever invented are this guy's like moveset. You know what I mean? There's nothing interesting about how he wrestles, right? Now people can say, oh, he's good in the ring. What do you mean he's good in the ring? He doesn't do anything that Crash Holly didn't do. You know what I mean? He doesn't do anything that, that, that literally anybody doesn't do. Like every wrestler you've ever seen has done a powerbomb. Every wrestler you've ever seen who is not like 400 pounds has done a diving splash. And sure as hell, literally every wrestler in the history of wrestling has done a sleeper hold. So it's like, what does this guy do that's so interesting, right? Reason number three, he lost all this weight, but now he's mostly skinny fat. Now, they have that picture of him where you could see his abs and, like, you know, maybe he was very dehydrated or it was a different time. But now when you look at him, like, he is a big, strong guy. Like, he was able to lift, like, Braun Strowman and do the last symphony, which I don't know why that's not his finishing move. Right? At least it's a little bit unique, right? He was able to lift up Braun Strowman, so he is a strong guy, right? But he doesn't look like he's a strong guy. Like, I wouldn't be surprised, like, you know, it, if they did, like, a test of strength, like, functional strength... I would imagine that Gunther, because of his age and everything, is probably stronger than The Rock, right? Like, I don't think The Rock can do a Last Symphony on Braun Strowman. But it doesn't matter. The Rock can do a lot of other moves that require strength, and he looks strong. Gunther just doesn't look very athletic, you know what I mean? As a matter of fact, I really believe that Fat Gunther was much better, right? It just fit. It just fit more. But anyways, it is what it is. He just feels like he's skinny fat, right? Reason number four, he has made the intercontinental title irrelevant and he does not need it. So contrary to popular belief, Gunther has not elevated the intercontinental title. The intercontinental title has also not elevated Gunther. All that's happened is that the intercontinental title, which at some point was used to push certain wrestlers uh, over that mid-card hump, right, has just been held by Gunther for about like two years now, right? Gunther, in, at the same time, has also been undefeated in two years, obviously, right? I personally believe that if he had, like, an undefeated streak, it would be more interesting than also having the Intercontinental title, right? Because having an undefeated streak would imply that he's beating everybody. H having an undefeated streak and being Intercontinental champion would imply that his undefeated streak is largely padded by his duties as Intercontinental champion. Namely, wrestling wrestlers like Tozawa... Otis and Chad Gable, whatever, part of Alpha Academy. You see what I'm saying? So with all that being said, I think he would have been better off without having the Intercontinental title. And honestly, I think the Intercontinental title could have been held by someone like Ricochet or something like that, which would allow Ricochet to be on TV 
like every once in a while, you know what I'm saying? Except for like, you know, nowadays Ricochet is on TV like every three months it feels like. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Uh, reason number five. Imperium is boring, motherfucks. Imperium is boring. It's three guys that just come out there and they don't do anything, right? They all have their own little thing going. But it's like you have Giovanni Vinci who's basically just Cesaro. Both in his capacity, like he's crazy strong. But also in his inability to do anything else other than wrestle, right? Then you have Ludwig Kaiser who keeps getting in good shape. But it's like he's just another Gunther. He's like he's like just a small Gunther, you know? So this faction sucks. They're boring. And quite honestly, they don't really feel like a faction, right? You don't see them doing these like six-man matches or anything like that anymore. But anyways, it is what it is. Reason number seven. Uh, sorry, reason number six. Gunther cannot cut a promo. Now, is he completely devoid of the ability to speak? No. Like... He's as good on the mic as, I don't know, Samoa Joe or Christopher Daniels, right? Where it's like they're like a 2 out of 10 on the mic, right? They're not a com- complete zero, right? But they're not, they're, they're not fun. Like, you don't look forward to Gunther's promo. When Samoa Joe starts cutting a promo, you're like, oh, fuck, I can't wait till this is over. This guy's going to bore me half to death. Samoa Joe always says the same thing. He just pretty much crescendos from starting off, like, quiet, and then he just gets angrier and angrier and angrier while he's saying the same three things he's been saying for 25 years, right? Some wrestlers are just not good at promos, right? In fact, some legendary wrestlers, in my opinion, are also not great at promos. Like, Sting is a great example, right? Sting, I never understood, like, Sting being this great promo guy, right? He, he really isn't. In the ring, he's, like, pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say he sucks. But, like, it's mostly the booking. It's mostly the booking that makes Sting a legend, right? Like, you can't sit here and say that Sting is a better wrestler than, I don't know, fucking, let's think of some, like, like Triple H, right? Like, most people would put Sting above Triple H, but, like, I'm not sure that Sting is a better in-ring guy than Triple H, right? So it's like, you know, and it's the same thing with, with Gunther, right? Except he doesn't have the, the, the booking that Sting has. He's just, he's just in boring, meaningless feuds for the last, like, two years, right? It's like, if you put a gun to my head and you said, name five feuds Gunther's been in the last two years, he should have been in, like, 30, right? He's been in, like, three, maybe maybe six, up to six I can accept, right? And they've all been boring, right? And that's because Gunther cannot cut a promo to get the feud over and make it memorable, right? Reason number seven. Imperium's Nazi implications are being, in my opinion, unused correctly, right? Now, either you're not going to, like, create this pseudo-Nazi faction, right? It's a bunch of Germanic people getting together in a team called Imperium, right? I'll let you connect the dots. Oh, Giovanni Vinci is Italian. Yeah, he's Fabian Eichner. He's one of those Italians that is actually a German, but just happened to be in Italy. He could be like Swiss, like like Claudio Castagnoli, for example, is like an Italian, right? Um, but he's Swiss, right? It's very similar with Fabian Eichner. He's one of those like Northern Italians that are actually Germans, right? And even then, Italy was part of the Axis powers, right? Imperium is clearly going for that, or at least they used to, right? Um, they would pretty much show up with their little coats, but that's not something that, um, you know, that it's being leaned on. I understand. You don't want to have a Nazi faction, right? But if you're not going to do it, if you're not going to pull the trigger and make it a uh, a Nazi faction, then it's like, what's the point, right? Like, why is that even a faction, right? But more on that later. Reason number eight. He's just another I take wrestling seriously character, right? That's really all Imperium is. They're like, we take wrestling seriously. Great. No one said you shouldn't. Why are you angry? You know what I'm saying? Like, why is Imperium pissed off, right? Also, why are they heels? If they take wrestling seriously, they wouldn't want to be heels, right? They'd want to be just neutrals. But it is what it is. Once again, cucks. Reason number nine. Nothing separates Gunther from any of the other foreign heel characters, right? Now, I shouldn't say that because there are some foreign heel characters that are just straight up better than Gunther, right? Like, for example, Jinder Mahal is a better character than Gunther, right? Jinder Mahal, his entire gimmick has always been, I've been held down, right? I've been held down. I look like a million bucks. Why am I a jobber, right? Not I've been held down the way that like Kozlov might say I've been held down, which is just not true, right? Because he gets push after push. But Jinder Mahal has been put in these goofy ass things and he's like, it's because I'm foreign. It's because I'm Indian, whatever, right? He can make that or he can underpin that, right? And also with, um, with Jinder Mahal, the fact that he is presented... He's Canadian, but he's presented as an Indian is relevant to his gimmick. Like he comes out to like Indian music. 
Uh, he comes out with the red carpet. He's the Maharaja, right? He's got an Indian faction. Like, all of this makes sense. Whereas Gunther doesn't act like an Austrian or a German or anything like that. He just acts like Kozlov, right? The fact that Kozlov is Russian and Gunther is Austrian has absolutely no bearing on their characters whatsoever, right? And more on Kozlov later, cucks. Reason number 10. Gunther appears about once every three pay-per-views, I counted, right? And is not consistently on Raw. And if, even if he is, he's not consistently wrestling on Raw. So, in my opinion, he's in the same level as Cody and Roman Reigns. Wrestlers that don't show up, right? And this diminishes his title. Because it's like, you're the Intercontinental Champion. You're essentially the TV Champion, right? Like, one thing that TNA did to their credit was when they introduced a TV title, right? There was a period of time when, like, Devon was the, was the TV champ, and he would defend it every week, right? It's the TV title. It's the title you see on TV, the Intercontinental title is the TV title of, of WWE, so it should be shown, uh, you know, it should be featured prominently, right? But it's not. Just like, honestly, none of the titles are featured prominently. Like, Seth Rollins is injured. Like, fuck, like, when was the last time we had a title match on Raw? You know what I mean? That's going to be another video. Cuckolds. Anyways, uh, reason number 11. He was in NXT UK and NXT for like six years, which really shows what they think of him. He's never going to be this main event star that people think, right? It's never going to happen. He could, like, it's possible that he'll get some sort of, like, you know, title run, like a like some sort of push, right? It's possible. He might get, like, a Mark Henry type run, but it's going to be, like, an, like a one-off, and it's going to be, like, probably not now. Uh, reason number 12. There was one match that he had against Tommaso Ciampa where the match ended by Gunther giving Tommaso Ciampa a chop to the chest and pinning him, and that is unacceptable, right? That is below Game Boy Advance level, right? Even in Game Boy Advance or, or the original Game Boy, right? If you had a wrestling game and you did a strike, you could never pin someone after a strike, right? But only in stupid real wrestling, in real WWE, can Gunter get away with winning what essentially was a pay-per-view NXT match, right? With a chop. So, there you have it, cucks. Reason number 13. His matches are mostly chops and strike-based nonsense and strike-based wrestling is boring, motherfucks. Last WrestleMania, it was him, Drew McIntyre, and Sheamus. Sheamus bruises easily. So there's this chopping the shit out of Sheamus. He looks like he's being destroyed. And then, like, the whole point is it's three, like, tough dudes beating each other with slaps. Right? Well, if I wanted to see this, I'd go watch Tyson Fury, who would knock out all three of these jobbers in about two seconds. Right? But I don't want to watch this. I want to watch wrestling. I want to watch over-the-top characters. And I want to watch wrestling moves. So we have... Two guys, Sheamus and Drew McIntyre, whose finishing moves are strikes. They're both kicks, right? Oh, which one, which kick is going to land first? Wow, what a compelling WrestleMania match. Or maybe Gunther will do one of his three regular ass WWE Attitude wrestling moves. Or WWE Warzone is a better example because Attitude actually had a lot of moves, right? He's going to do one of those moves and I'm supposed to care? Absolutely not. Go fuck yourselves. Next, reason number 14. I was right the whole time, cucks, that he would achieve absolutely nothing this year, right? There is this weird thing that says that if you just do the same thing year after year and it, you're not losing, then this is a step in the right direction. It absolutely isn't. Last Royal Rumble, like the first one that Cucky Rhodes won, right? Gunther started at number one and lasted like he broke the record, you know? And then he was eliminated by Cody, who came in at like number 30, right? And the underpinnings, the subtext there was, oh shit, what if Cody was number one and Gunther was number 30, right? The logic would be that Gunther would do better, right? Because Cody would be tired and Gunther wouldn't be tired, right? And Gunther almost beat him despite coming in at number one. Well, this year at the Royal Rumble, Gunther didn't come in at number one and Cody didn't come in at number 30. And what happened? Cody threw his ass over anyways. Or maybe some other jobber did. It doesn't fucking matter. The point is, Gunther went down this year, right? He had a great... Uh, what's it called? A great showing, you know, at, at the last Royal Rumble, two Royal Rumbles ago, I suppose. He had a great showing coming at number one. Then he had a WrestleMania match, with, which I thought was boring. There's a bunch of people slapping each other. But he was wrestling two former world champions, right? Two former WrestleMania main event type motherfucks. Sheamus is like a five, six time world champion. You understand what I'm saying? But now if he's wrestling Sami Zayn and he didn't do anything impressive in the Royal Rumble. So it's like, what has he done this year? Beat Chad Gable a few times? Fantastic. Everyone beats Chad Gable a few times. Anyways, it is what it is. We can't do anything about it. These are just the facts, cuts. These are just the facts. Reason number 15. 
the power bomb he does, right, is botchy and always looks different. This means he doesn't know how to properly do a power bomb or doesn't want to put his power bomb over as a realistic, effective finisher, right? One of the greatest things ever is the last ride power bomb. I remember when Undertaker first used it, right? And I'm like, what the hell is this? He's going to do a power bomb? That's not what Undertaker does. He does the tombstone and the choke slam, cucks. But he picks up the guy, puts him off the power bomb. And then, because he's fucking The Undertaker, he innovates a new move, right? Undertaker was already a legend, right, when he was rebranded as the American Badass. He was already, he already had had a Hall of Fame career, right? Undertaker's had like three Hall of Fame careers. He's had like the first stint, the American Badass stint, and then like the WrestleMania, you know, icon stint, right? Undertaker really is one of the most successful wrestlers of all time. I mean, he was largely a mid-carder, you know, until like late in his career, but it is what it is. He was an upper mid carder that you could plug into the main event. He was never as big as Stone Cold or or The Rock or even Triple H, right? Like, but eventually he became that, like late in his career, cucks. But the point is, Undertaker did not need to innovate a new gimmick or a new move. But guess what, fuckers? He did, right? Undertaker takes the time to do a power bomb, which is hard, harder than the tombstone, right? And then he extends his arms, right? Just making this basically a super power bomb. And this is The Undertaker doing this, and it looks badass, right? Gunther barely lifts the guy, and then drops him, and then stacks him in this, like, hump mode. And I'm supposed to believe this is the same caliber as, as like, the last ride? Because finishers are supposed to be somewhat, you know, commensurate, right? But there you go. Gunther sucks, and Taker don't. Uh, Gunther's dive... He's a 16. His diving splash is basically him just falling like an idiot from the turnbuckle. He doesn't even jump. He just, he just climbs up and like one second after he climbs up, he just kind of like falls over and flails in the air and also looks inconsistent, right? And he pins the guy and great, it is what it is, right? As a result of all this, we get to reason 17. It is unclear what his finisher is, right? Now, this is an important point. I, I, I don't want to gloss over this. It's important that we know what the finisher of a wrestler is. And as a matter of fact, a finishing move needs to have a name that somehow connects to that wrestler as a character, right? So let's stick to it. The last ride, right, is supposed to be a reference to when someone dies, you put him in a hearse. That's her last ride. And Undertaker, he's the fucking Undertaker. He takes you under in the coffin, right? So he also performs the last ride, right? It makes perfect sense. It also has connotations to the fact that now he's a bike rider, right? So this is a move that makes sense. Right? Gunther, he had the last symphony, which is a stupid name, but whatever, it is what it is, right? But he doesn't even do that anymore. His finishing move now is the power bomb, the splash, and the sleeper. None of these are are unique to him. A lot of people do these moves, so it's like who gives a flying fuck, number one. And number two, which one of them is the finisher, right? He could do a power bomb and someone could kick out. It's completely feasible. He could do a splash and someone could kick out. Someone can, can escape his sleeper hold, right? So it's like, how am I supposed to know when the match is coming close to an end? And likewise, how am I supposed to know that Gunther, you know, like that someone kicked out or escaped his finisher? And this is a big deal. If he doesn't have any finishers, he just has three signature moves, right? At the end of the day, it's very possible that Gunther could do all three moves. The guy gets out and then Gunther just does a chop and pins him like he did to Champa, right? And that's not good. That's the sign of a shit wrestler, cucks. Reason number 18, it is unclear what his character is or if he even has a character. In my opinion, he has no character. But if he does have a character, what is it? Someone explain it. What is Gunther's character? And people are always going to say, he's just this Austrian tough guy who doesn't take nonsense. Okay, so he's basically Kevin Owens, but Austrian. So we've got Austrian Kevin Owens, and then we have Kevin Owens. And I'm supposed to think both are great? Go fuck yourselves, right? What the hell is the difference between him and Drew McIntyre? Drew McIntyre is a Scottish guy who's a tough guy, right? Is everyone in this company just their nationality and the phrase tough guy afterwards? Because that's not good enough, cucks. That's why you put him against Drew McIntyre, against Sheamus, in a throwaway match where the actual match is, okay, we have three European tough guys. Let's see which of the three European tough guys is the toughest. Ooh. I'd rather see Ricochet versus fucking... Uh, Jake Paul or whatever, Logan Paul a hundred times, then watch Gunther cuckolds. Reason number 19. What exactly is Imperium and why are they all friends? 
Oh, they wrestled in the Indies together. Did they? They never talk about that. They just present them as, oh, it's just these three Europeans are friends together, right? Even with groups where you don't have to explain it, right? It's sometimes underpinned by their gimmick. So, for example, The New Day is a great example, right? Like, on its face, the implications are, oh, The New Day, they're all black, so they're all friends because that's how wrestling works, right? But within that, right, they develop a gimmick and you realize that they have a lot of things in common, right? They're all anime nerds, right? All the things that have in common pretty much centers around the fact that they're all dorks, right? They, they are all anime nerds, right? They're all these like pseudo-athletic geeks, right? They're just geeks in general. And they like to be goofy, right? That's what brings them together. You know, their gimmick explains why they're together. And they're black. Obviously, that's part of it too. We're not going to deny that, right? Just because it's controversial, right? Obviously, they put three black guys together because... Because they're like, oh, black people hanging out together makes sense. Europeans hanging out together makes sense, right? But it really doesn't, right? One of the best factions of all time, in my opinion, was the Three Life Crew, which was Road Dog, Conan, and Ron the Truth Killings, also known as Our Truth. The, the premise was exactly the, a subversion of that. It's like, yo, black people, white people, and Hispanic people from different backgrounds, right? Where like Our Truth was presented to be like from the ghetto, and Conan is obviously like a Hispanic. Uh, immigrant who you know is from the barrio ese, right and road dog is supposed to be like a trailer trash white guy the idea is they can be friends right it doesn't have to be the way that they present it to us where black people only are friends with black people and white people are only friends with white people in fact we all know that's not true right because most of us have people of different races so there you have it cuts uh that's another reason why imperium sucks ass Reason number 20, one of my personal favorites. He is not entertaining. You can cut it any way you want, right? The fact is, Guter is not entertaining. If, if it weren't for the fact that the Dave Meltzer demographic just keeps regurgitating the, the idea that Guter is great, nobody would naturally think he's entertaining, right? You'd be like, he's boring. He reminds me of Bull Dempsey, right? That's what you'd probably think, cucks. And we're going to talk about that as well later. Reason number 21, he is unlikely to ever be a serious main eventer. Let's be real, right? Reason number 22, he's got Kozlov, Vladimir Kozlov written all over him, cucks. I would be more shocked if Gunter becomes a main eventer than I would if he gets paired up with R-Truth as part of like a dancing Austrian. Maybe he, he, like, he turns his back on Imperium because he tells them we have to be more lighthearted. And they're like, no, the mat is sacred, right? And then he becomes like a goofy Austrian and starts teaming up against Imperium. And it's going to be like him and like Tozawa versus like Imperium. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Anyways, uh, the reason 23, he's got Bull Dempsey written all over him, mother fucks. He reminds me of Bull Dempsey. He's just a guy with a basic moveset who doesn't do anything else. Reason number 24 and 25 are my, my actual favorites. That's why I left them for last. Reason 24. Kozlov is objectively better and Kozlov sucked. Right? At the end of the day, you can say whatever the fuck you want. But thus far, nobody has been able to explain to me objectively why Gunther's better than Kozlov. I don't want to hear bullshit platitudes like Gunther's better in the ring. I don't agree that he's better in the ring. Kozlov had a more varied moveset. Right? So I'll give you an example. When the WWE SmackDown whatever versus Raw came out, where Kozlov was introduced, I was like, oh shit, with the fact that we have Kozlov now, there's going to be like five or six new moves at least, right? Like the little trapping like headbutt, the thing where the guy goes off and gets intercepted by a headbutt, the, the iron curtain, right? Kozlov actually had moves, right? And I'm like, oh, I would like to create the character of Vladimir Kozlov, but I can't because... His moves are not in the game, in the old game, right? If you wanted to create Gunther, you could create him literally in the first ever wrestling game that allowed you to create characters, you could create Gunther. As a matter of fact, all you'd have to do is, is, is do create new, pick hairstyle number three, and then pick default moveset number one, and you would get Gunther, right? So Kozlov is better than him. He's also bigger than him. He's also stronger than him, and he would murder him in a fight. So it's like, what makes Gunther good? If Kozlov, if everyone accepts that Kozlov sucks, what makes Gunther good, right? I'm going to need to remake my Kozlov and Gunther comparison video to delve into this in more detail, cucks. But for now, reason number 25, people insist 
that Gunther is a great wrestler despite having no evidence, right? That's the food for thought. Think about why you think, if you think, that Gunther is good uh, and explain to me why uh, he is good objectively. Not with your opinions. No, he's great in the ring. No, he's not great in the ring, right? You can't just say things without arguing them. Oh, oh, Xavier Woods is better than Shawn Michaels. No, he isn't, cucks. Oh, Gunther's better than Kozlov. No, he isn't, cucks. And with that being said, happy Easter, motherfuckers.